Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. I'm Jack Curry, and today I am joined by four-time World Series champion manager and Hall of Famer, Joe Torrey. And Joe, before we get started, I did want to ask you, how are you and your family doing during these challenging times? Jack, it's, uh, you know, I'm a homebody to begin with, but this takes it to another extent here. I mean, uh, at another level, I should say. Uh, everybody's good so far. My daughter, uh, Andrea, is on the West Coast, and so she's been shuttling back and forth between her apartment in L.A. and her boyfriend's mother's house in uh, Oakland area. So, uh, but so far, so good. Joe, you managed the Yankees for 12 seasons, and I, I think you would admit, I know you would admit, that one of those years was unlike any other. 2001 because of 9-11 you had to manage a team after our country was hit by a tragedy we're in the middle of a tragedy right now what do you remember about coming back after 9-11 in 2001 what was your focus with the Yankees what did you feel your obligations were because the world was hurting back then too well Jack uh, you know I have to go back to that Tuesday morning uh, September 11th when um, I know I was scheduled to do a charity luncheon that day and I get a call from the car service that I guess it's called off and I hadn't really turned on the TV. And, and when I did, I, you know, it was a numbing experience watching what was going on. And, uh, you know, baseball was basically not even my mind anymore. You know, my first thought was, my daughter, who was five, and I know she was roaming around the house somewhere. I wanted to make sure that what she was watching wasn't what I was watching. And then, um, you know, thinking about the safety of, of my players and family. I had a sister, I remember uh, my wife's sister, one of my wife's sisters uh, was a flight attendant for American Airlines. I, and she was on reserve, so we had no clue where she was. And just a lot of things and my son worked down in that area and I was you know curious about him so it was really about loved ones and baseball was you know way back in in the concerns at that point in time and then you know as the week unraveled a little bit and uh, you know you you started to, and I'm not going to say the smoke is clearing because it didn't clear for a long long time but on the Saturday, we, we took a trip into Manhattan, uh, whatever players that were left and, you know, a couple of coaches, uh, you know, we had a couple of vans that, you know, started out at the Jacobs, uh, J Jacob Javits Center, uh, where all the, you know, firefighters and everybody who came from outside New York were, were stationed. And, you know, we spent some time there and, and then we went to, to St. Vincent's Hospital. Unfortunately, there was nobody there other than, you know, some firefighters who had smoke inhalation. And, and then we went to the um, to the armory, uh, which I, I thought was very sensitive spot for us to be there because of, uh, you know, this is when uh, people, you know, who had loved ones, uh, and the towers were waiting for results of the DNA. And, and so I remember, you know, not sure if we should go in there. And I remember Randy Levine went in ahead of us and, and then he came out and waved us in. And, and when we walked in there, and I know you've probably heard me talk about this before, Jack, but Bernie Williams was one of our guys. And he went up to this woman. And he says, I don't know what to say, but you look like you need a hug. Mm. and and then and all the families and all the groups were separated by you know little partitions low partitions and it was you know we sort of walked around the perimeter a little bit and then we were waved in by families and when we when we started mingling uh it was it was an unreal feeling because we realized that you know, people were looking to embrace us um, uh, because I never really knew, I, I knew what baseball meant to me, you know, in, in my career and my life. Uh, 
but in this situation, this was unlike any other situation I've ever been involved in. Uh, you know, you didn't realize where you belonged here, but these people start all of a sudden people would come out with, with photos of loved ones with Yankee mm -hmm. jackets and t-shirts and hats. And, and, and then you realize how welcomed we were that these people had a sense that they needed something other than, you know, what they were waiting to find out. So you so descriptive in your memories of that time and those moments were so dark. You've always been someone who has been known for your eloquence and your wisdom. What words would you offer up to New Yorkers and people around the country who feel as if we're in a dark period right now? How, how do we get out of this? When is the light at the end of the tunnel? You know, New York, are, are, they're very instinctive people. You know, they, they may not have time for you in the normal day, uh, but when something uh, happens, such as the pandemic now and 9-11 and uh, the couple of blackouts we've had, uh, you know, over the years, uh, they're so, uh, they, they want to help. Arms are open. Uh, the only thing I could say is, you know, let's, you know, exercise the patience that we don't have during a normal workday. And, you know, it's, it's really tough because if you turn on TV, Jack, you get so many different opinions <clears throat> that, you know, let's go out and fight this thing. And then you, you hear the doctors who I sort of like to trust that, that they seem to know what they're doing and saying. Uh, so I, I think we, we have to be conservative. I mean, as, as much as New Yorkers are very aggressive uh, and feel like they're bulletproof at times, uh, I, I think we just have to be careful because if you think about how this started, one person hmm. and, and, you know, where it has climbed to, it, it, it's absolutely frightening because there are some similarities with 9-11. You know, you, you go out uh, and, and you don't know who you can trust or who you can talk to. And uh, of course, 9-11 was a lot different because you felt like you gained strength when you were in a crowd. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is really the opposite. But I would just say, you know, we're going to learn, uh, and we already have learned, I think, as individuals, things that we're going to need to change. And, I, and as I say, I think New Yorkers uh, take pride in, in the fact that, you know, they're tough, but they're very caring and uh, they're pretty smart when it comes to needing to do something and have uh, young people to protect. Joe, you and your wife, Allie, started the Safe at Home Foundation in 2002, wanted to end the cycle of domestic violence and save lives. During the coronavirus, everyone's home, everyone's on top of each other. And New York State has said that in the month of March, domestic violence incidents were up 15%. In April, that number rose to 30%. What would be your advice to anyone who was involved in, in a home where this is occurring? Well, find a way to get the message out. To, you know, call somebody you trust, if it be an uncle or a neighbor or somebody. Because uh, that's the scary part about it. You know, we were all told to stay home. But in cases of uh, the kids who, again, you know, when we have our Margaret's places in, in these schools, uh, it's a haven for them. You know, they're finding out that, you know, they didn't cause what was going on in their homes. Uh, and it's uh, they're not alone. They're not the only ones. And we give them tools to deal with it. But it's tough to deal with something when you're basically incarcerated. And uh, we do have some virtual, you know, connection with uh, at some of these schools. But you know, we we need to let them know that someone's out there to help them. And so hopefully the tools that we give them uh, are are able to help them during this very tough time. Joe, your website is joetory.org, and it actually has some great advice on there regarding COVID-19. It talks about separate 
what is in your control from what you can't control. Get up and make sure you move around because moving around is good for you mentally and physically. There's a gratification I'm sure you got from being a Yankee manager and winning games. There, there's, there's joy that comes with that. But how would you describe the joy in, in being able to impact lives and, and being able to do what you've done with this foundation, save lives and, and put people into a better position? Well, you know, I never shared it, Jack, when, when it was going on in my home. And I, I thought I was born with this low self-esteem and this nervousness that I, and it doesn't go away. I mean, I still have the same feelings, but I have to thank, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my wife, Allie, <clears throat> for suggesting we go to this seminar in, in December of 95. And, you know, I discovered through that four day seminar that <clears throat> the feelings that I had were created by the fear that my dad reigned on our home. So, um, it, you know, it was something I wanted to scream from the treetops because I, uh, there are so many kids out there that when I talk about my feelings growing up and that none of my friends in the neighborhood knew about it. And uh, I see a lot of head shakes out there understanding and, and and realizing that they're familiar with what I was feeling and I I can't tell you how gratifying that is when you see these kids come in sort of tiptoe into Margaret's place and after several visits they realize they're not alone it's not their fault and again we can't solve what's happening in their lives we can't pull them out of the house but we certainly can give them tools that will really work work for them not only during these years but in the future and I, I to me that's very gratifying well joe with what we're enduring now and those statistics that i mentioned earlier the safe at home foundation is is very much needed i appreciate you giving us some time right here and uh, hope that you and your family uh, continue to stay safe and i hope we see baseball down the line well, I'm I'm counting on baseball. I always try to have a positive outlook and I'm I'm just hoping these rumors and the conversation that you know in the next couple of months we'll be on the baseball field. Uh, I'm excited about it. Thanks again, Joe. Anytime, Jack. Thank you.